Hello everyone. Um, so last week we talked about scientific methods and um, argued that more often than not we, we use non-scientific methods by actually outsourcing or delegating the task of um, scientific modeling to others, preferably uh, credible scientists, but of course not all the time. Uh, and, and there are many problems with uh, such approach, but this week I want to discuss an even more bizarre um, alternative, which is um, closely related to, to, to religious methods. So um, in neural physics, or if we assume that the universe is a neural network, there are two, um, two relevant subspaces or subnetworks. The first one is uh, the physical space or a subnetwork with uh, emergent three-dimensional um, connections. And the second one is the hidden space or, or a subnetwork with arbitrary non-local connections between, between neurons. Now, uh, the locality of the connections in the physical space um, enables us to efficiently model the three-dimensional physics. Um, allows us to model it, make it simpler to model it. But the non-locality of connections in the hidden space makes it actually very difficult uh, to model the hidden space directly. And so there isn't really much we know about it other than some indirect uh, test through, through some complex physical phenomena. Now, uh, example of such tests include emergent quantumness, uh, but they're, they're or emergent gra gravity, um, but there may also be a more complex psychological phenomena such as uh, intuition, deja vu, something we did talk about earlier, but we'll also come back and discuss um, all those phenomena at some point in, in the future. However, uh, not, not this week. So now let's assume, let's make some, some simplifying assumptions about the hidden space. Let's assume that it does contain vast computational resources, but not necessarily as high level of compression. So we'll call it the hidden oracle. Now, uh, we'll, uh, for the following reasons. So we'll assume that this oracle, this hidden oracle, is able to check answers to the, the so-called uh, decision problem. And it can do it very fast, um, even in polynomial time. Um, and the decision problems are the problems which can be formulated as a yes or no question. Now, such problems are usually called NP complete if uh, the answer, yes or no answer, can be um, obtained fast or, or in polynomial time. Now, um, now, of course, one might argue that the actually most difficult task is not to get the answer, uh, but to ask the right question. Uh, and that may be true. But for now, we just make an assumption of what this hidden, uh, minimal assumption of what this hidden oracle can and cannot do. So the assumption that it cannot ask complex questions, it just doesn't have the right architecture for that. Uh, perhaps it's something like ChatGPT, maybe uh, version 42.0. Um, now, of course, we're not claiming that that the hidden oracle uses transformers or tension mechanisms, uh, and most likely not. It is just to illustrate what we mean by the, by the hidden oracle, or by, by, the, by the abilities of this hidden space. Now, by the way, this may also explain um, why the universe needs these two different types of architectures, two different types of, um, of subnetworks, a very sparse subnetwork of physical space uh, and perhaps a very, a very dense subnetwork of the hidden space. So the answer may be that the physical space evolved in a way that it is able to, to ask uh, difficult or complex questions and the, the hidden space evolved to be able to answer uh, uh, some, some of the complex questions. Uh, and that's why we have two different uh, ideas. Of course, this is uh, the pure speculation at this point, but this can sum something that can in principle uh, be checked. For example, uh, let's consider um, a, a good physicist or, or mathematicians. Um, 
something something that would call it a highly efficient learning system. Now, if it's a good physicist or mathematician, it's usually able to formulate conjectures, uh, what or ask right questions. Now, may not know the answers to these questions, may not know if the conjecture is true or false, but nevertheless, this is some skill that is very useful uh, for, for a physicist. Now, at the same time, if we would have the you know physicist mathematician asking good questions, and there is a hidden oracle who can. Um, answer those questions if they are yes or no question then it may be of great help for science and for the universe's uh, learning system okay. again just a speculation at this point but uh, something to consider um, now however one one must be careful not to be carried away because even if the hidden space exists um, and even if uh, somehow someone has access to it maybe not everyone um, it is still not immediately clear that the answers should be trusted, right? In fact, uh, for any subsystem, which includes this hidden oracle, to be trusted with some complex problems, it must be first uh, checked with the simpler problems. Um, uh, that should, should be checked with the simpler problems that can be solved using alternative methods, perhaps using scientific methods. Um, now, this this is would be a still not scientific approach but it's different to what we discussed last, last week. Last week we discussed a non-scientific approach where external computational resources in the physical space are used, and now we are discussing about uh, external computational resources in the hidden space. Now, in some, um, in some way it may be more related to the religious method as opposed to the scientific method if those uh, hidden resources or hidden space is used. Now, let's uh, quickly talk about pros and cons um, of using this, I want to emphasize, it's a hypothetical uh, hidden space, uh, uh, hidden oracle, as opposed to using the real uh, physical space. What are the cons and what are the pros? pros? And now, cons is that not all of the answers can be checked independently uh, and immediately using scientific methods. So you should kind of believe some of the answers or not. Uh, and uh, and the pros would be uh, that the perhaps more complex questions can be can be asked maybe complex or more abstract questions can be asked and uh, you can get answers still you would only be asking decision of problems decision question yes or no questions but the questions can be more complex now given all that uh, does it still make sense to use the hidden oracle now it's, it's a question right um, now, another question, does it make sense to believe those who claim to have used the oracle to obtain answers? That again, there's another layer of belief and it's not really clear. Um, I guess the, the answer would be in uh, how much the, the answers to a question can be checked independently. So if there are ways to check some answers independently using the scientific methods, then it, it is okay. If, if, if no, then there is a, that, that may be problematic. Now, also note that even if um, it is beneficial for um, some learning systems or agents to have access to the hidden oracle uh, for whatever reason, the, the level of access may also vary between different agents. And once again, if we go to this terminolo terminology of the large language models like ChatGPT, uh, not all agents, not all learning subsystems may, may be able to use the same number of input tokens. Now, for example, some agents may be able to ask more complex questions um, described by more tokens, and then others can only ask simple questions with fewer tokens. And if the hidden oracle doesn't accept enough tokens, uh, it may just not give a reliable answer, right? And so that, that answer that um, could be trusted. Now, uh, the perhaps the last point that I want to make is to note that um, physical and hidden spaces or subnetworks are actually constantly interacting with each other and should be considered as um, acting on each other and acting as, as environments of each other. And uh, one of their learning objective could be to actually learn each other. And so we can really think of this, then we can really think of this hidden oracle as, as a learning system that was trained 
to, to model the, the physical space and maybe vice versa. Now, if the hidden space was trained for a very long time, uh, then has already a pretty good statistical model of the physical space. And um, if so, um, all of the you know, physical, biological, psychological phenomena um, uh, that, that, that the physical space contains, it may be able to answer questions about those, those phenomena. Now, of course, but still, uh, one should be able, one should only trust those answers if they can kind of be uh, verified independently. Now, um, the, the other point is that um, even if it was trained for a long time and it may have a good statistical model of the phenomena that existed for a long time, so maybe physical and biological, even some psychological phenomena that existed uh, for millions of years, but there, there may be some other psychological or even social phenomena that are relatively new. And so the hidden space or this hidden oracle uh, may not just have enough statistics about it. It may not be able to answer questions about it just because it hasn't learned enough about it. And once again, without checking uh, the answers, even by trial and error, we may not be able to um, understand and, and uh, um, believe the, the answers that the, the oracle is, is, is given. Um, so there are many questions remaining, and, um, but that is all I wanted to say for today. The topic is, I want to emphasize once again, this topic was uh, definitely very controversial. Um, and I'm not trying to take sides here, whether this hidden oracle exists or it doesn't exist. Uh, my, my task was to actually try to explain what are the Implica implications, some of the implications of this hidden uh, hidden oracle um, in context of their neural physics. There are many, many other questions that we can still ans ask about it, and um, we don't have time for this today, but we'll definitely come back to questions about hidden space in the future. Um, so anyways, that's all I had uh, for today, and um, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.